the cracker. So let me get my head down again while these are going. Okay, you got this fish gone for another half an hour. Fishing's been that good. There's more fish than I've got bait. It's cleared me out of bait completely today. I'm scouring the blades of glass with bits of sweet corn. Okay, guys, I'm all done. Three quarters of a pound, two pound. Let's get the straight back. Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Wednesday the 28th of August today and we're down at Posick, opposite Surlingham Ferry. It's six o'clock, bang on. I've not started fishing yet, I'm just in the process of setting up. I've set up the feeders. I've uh, put the bait up feeder on found the spot and then the length where I want to fish which is basically a good two-thirds of the way across the river today just at the bottom of the far side shelf and I've got a count of about six and a half seconds um, I'm gonna be pole f uh, fishing a whip and a feeder today the same as I did before um, I'm gonna start with three bait up feeders today because it's a bigger river and a lot more flow it's quite steady at the minute. I'm just going to put three in and then I'm going to build a peg as normal. I'll put two in to start with and I'll quickly show you where I'm fishing. But uh, basically the same ground bait as before. I've got a 50-50 mix of green and brown crumb. There's a, a good, about, I put four handfuls of fish meal in it this today. So it's really fish mealy with a load of molasses, a load of hemp oil, hemp water. There's crushed coriander in there, there's uh, desiccated coconut in there. There's all sorts of bits and pieces. And again, I'm putting, uh, damping two mil pellets through it, fully wetted overnight. Just cover them with a bit of water in a bag, airtight. Dead squats, dead maggots and corn on the, on the feeder and then hemp and, hemp and castor uh, on the whip lines. I'll put two in. I'm just using the 60 gram press and bait or feeder. I have got a great big Coke can, but not for today. But I'll show you where I am. Basically, I'm aiming for the apex of the corner of the uh, peg over there. So, well, just, just to the left, I've got the yellow umbrella in the garden to aim at. I've got my heavy feeder rod today. <clears throat> This is my uh, Shakespeare Mac 2 XT 14 foot heavy feeder, and that's with a three ounce tip in it. I've got a 12 pound shock leader down to 10 pound braid. And where that yellow umbrella is, I'm just gently sweeping back, give it a good cast, rod high in the air, hit the clip. Give it a couple of seconds to empty and wind down and give it a really good sweep over your head and get it up and get it emptied as fast as possible. Okay, so now it's just a case unclipping. Take the feeder off. There's no hook link on it. Not when I'm baiting up. I don't want to go too light a feeder here because I know it's a uh, Deceptive the flow. But I'm going to leave that to sell <clears throat> like I did before. <clears throat> I'm going to set up my whip lines. I've got a six metre whip and a seven metre whip. And I shall set this.
I do like these um, plastic sort of method feeder beads. I've got a bead, plastic bead here. They're really protective. They don't twist, they don't tangle. They're quick and easy to change hook links and bits and pieces. I'm starting with a good two foot hook link on there. And that's 3.2 pound, uh, 2.8 pound Maxima on there. And a size 14 Camden and B520. Okay, I've just set up the whip line. Fishing five meters to hand. I've got the six meter section if I need to ship on when the flow picks up because it's really quite uh, steady at the minute. There's loads of fish topping in front of me and feeding casters and hemp. The second run through, I plumbed up, just touching them, just touching the bottom, just dead depth at the minute. And a lovely rod. But uh, there's something not quite right. I've had, oh, <laughs> there's a fish on down there. Um, I had two or three bites, or little knocks, float didn't move, but uh, there was a fish there, I bumped them, but I think what they're doing, I think they're quite shallow. I think they're going down for the bait and then coming straight back up again. I'll show you where I am. Nice roach. It's good to see some roach back. It's normally predominantly rud or hybrids. Stay still, you. <laughs> I've only got a size 20 B911 on, uh, B511. Nice roach. Just moving that shot down, so I've got one number 10. I've got a hook. I've got about 10 inches between the hook and the first number 10. And above that, I've got three number eights. Then my Olivet and three number eights under it. So I can have a play around with the shot and pattern at any time. Let's so start off a single fluoro maggot. I'm just feeding a pinch of casters and a pinch, pinch of hemp every time. I try to feed just a little bit short of where I'm fishing, fishing just beyond where I'm feeding. See again, that float just lifted. Okay, that's better. I just added a section on just so I can run it through a little bit more. Oh, I don't mind this. Another really good cracking roach. Beautiful, oh, stunning fish. I do not want to do that. Right, I'm going to carry on with this for another 15 20 minutes and then get, get on the feeder. Not that one will come off this line.
there's been a match or something, I'll probably uh, stay on it, to tell you the truth. As I say, never come off a feeding line. Another quality roach. I'll quickly show you what I'm my bait trade today. We've got the usual suspects. Got a load of damp and two mils, really soft. Wet it overnight, put them in a bag. Some, uh, the rest of my squats are washed off and killed, so a load of dead squats. A load of worms, and they're not looking the best, so I'll use them a day, or if not, I'll get rid of them. Got a tin of corn, just in water. Two pints of hemp, which I did yesterday. A pint of maggots, or just over a pint. And a pint of mixed. Uh, Sorry, pike casters and a pike and mixed maggots, mainly reds and fluoros with a few whites in there. I'm going to have one more run through on this whip and I'm going to pick up my feeder line. So it's had a good half an hour now to settle with those three bait up feeders. See if there's anything moved in over the top. I'm just fishing five metres to hand, but I've got the six metre section I'm just putting on so I can allow it to run through a bit more. Flow's just gently starting to pick up now. There's another nice roach. I'll just swing on this one, just about on the edge of swinging. Roach seem to have moved back in. All right, I've told a lie. I'm gonna have one more, one more go. So I need to get some bait back through the uh, feeder line before it just gets washed away. As if there are any bream down there, it won't take them long to get through it all. Another roach. 
Well, I'm going to come off this line now and get back on the feeder. When I'm making me uh, whip, whip rigs up, measure out my sections, four metres, five, six, whatever I'm fishing. And then I go probably about two foot short so I can swing it. And the weight of the fish is going to bring that down nicely just so I can swing it into hand. I've got the rod here, the fish is on. Just gives you a bit of play. Okay, I've just got on the feeder. I've just uh, started with what I was doing the other day. It's one single bit of corn and one caster. First cast. Lovely roach. But I've got my stopwatch down here and I give it four minute casts to start with and see how we get on. Right, let's get in again. Okay guys, I'm set a bit of a tactical change. A, a three or four roach, quite a good roach to bite all little jaggedy and finicky and the miss a couple. So I've just put a one feed full of chopped worm through. See if it makes any difference and I put a bit of worm and caster on the hook straight away, so the first skimmer. But the flow is really gentle today, very very gentle. Um, just trying to think of a way up and I've got the other lighter feeder on here I want to get onto the same line as this one, this one's clipped up but I haven't picked the other one up so I might walk it out behind me and get the same distance and clip, clip up um, so at the minute this flow is really gentle and uh, I think this tip's a bit heavy for, this, uh, for, the, for the river at the minute I'll have one more cast. And again, you get just literally then after done some tiny little trembles before the tip decided to go round, so it's just a case of sitting on your hands and doing nothing until the tip goes right round. And do the same again, a bit of worm, 
and a single bit of catheter and then some chopped worm through the uh, one feeder full at a time. I'm not going to put any in the ground bait that are mixed up in case they decide they don't want it and then once it's in it's in because worms can actually kill the peg if they don't want it. Basically, just do one feed full at a time. You, you're not committing to anything. We get two, three worms, and then just roughly chop them, not too small. A quarter inch section. And I'm still putting two mils through, some squats and caster. I'm going to stay off the maggots. But uh, it's definitely the river I can see it now is on the flood. So it's rising. And he just hit the clip that one. Very good cut. But the flow should start to pick up in a minute now it's on the flood. You can see on the boarding on the far side in this morning, I like to get on my stomach to reach down to the water, but it's come up. Come up a good foot and a half, two foot already. And the forecast for today was supposed to be 26, 27. Very, very light wind and uh, cloudy all day long. So that would be normally perfect green conditions but, uh, as we saw from Monday that sometimes goes all the way out the window and there's a little tremble on the tip there look and again and again and again there tremble but we're just going to wait till that positive pull round It knows it's there, it wants it. Yeah, it's just got half seven and a really good roach on the feeder on the worm and caster. Just had the one skimmer, that's up to sharp. Try the corn again. I'm going to corn and caster. 
and just switch between corn and castor and worm and castor. Looking at the weather situation as well and the forecast. I think it is going to be a, another roach and skimmer day. Just let this boat past on my line. Just swing it out as far as I can get it. There's no flow at the minute, or very little. And just at the bottom of the shelf. There's a little bite there. But down here, it's always quite predictable. You get an early run close in, a roach and rud, and then they back off as the day goes on. And then later, later on this afternoon, this evening, they'll come back in close again. And there's another bite. That's a better fish as well. Another good rod. But when I'm striking, I'm not feeling anything for a second or two, so I think they've gone down, taken it, and come back up. So I'm going to have to move them. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have lifted that. Should have netted that one. But they're going down, picking it up, and coming back up again. So. have to play around with a shot and pattern I think. Well, I'll try that again. I'm just going to move my shots. I think what I'm going to do is have my Olivet. I'm going to have a bulk of three, number eight, and just one dropper below, so I can get the bait right down on the deck. That's just dragging there. Uh, I see. I've got to be out over the ledge, because the float doesn't settle right. That's better. This one. It's 
aim for that umbrella. It's a very gentle flow today, even though it's on the flood. It's very gentle. <coughs> trying to put as little as bend as possible on the tip. Just watching that line all the way back. Okay, it's just gone eight o'clock. We went a bit quiet for a while, so I put a small bait up feeder in, just about half of it. I've gone back out, had a good bite, had a good fish on all the way, pretty much down here. Then it just locked solid again. Um, there's like a, well people say it's an old, the old chain or where the ferry used to get pulled across backwards or forwards, there's something permanent there, it's just, it locks solid. I let the line go loose and it, I got it free, but the fish had gone. But it was a good bream. I need to get the fish to my left. Because if it goes downstream and I can't get it up over that, wherever it is, Every time you're down here, it's, there is a snag. I sort of run to the right of this, along the bottom. And I've got a good bite at the minute as well. But I went back on corn, nothing again. I'm back on worm. Just getting the bites on the worm and the worm and double caster at the minute. I'll try and keep this to the left if I can. Sometimes it's a big fish, it's worth standing up as well just to get it off the bottom a bit. That was an awful bit of landing, Nigel. <laughs> and another skimmer. Hey. Right, get back in. I'm going to lower my tip at the minute because I had a boat come through and uh, I thought I'd bury my line because I'm right over the other side and the tip just didn't move at all so I, I tried it just on my knee to my side and it's fine it's just really really gentle flow today but it's a really big tide it's nearly up to the embankment uh, over the other side right let's get back in and get this fish sorted Just had a re-rig and put a different hook link on. This is a 3.2 pound by pearl on. It's still sticking with size 12 cameras and B520. It's a lot thinner, but same same breaking strain. I had a couple of casts with a sweet corn and cast them at nothing. I've just gone back to worm. Nice, nice skimmer. I'm just chopping a Two worms at a time and putting them through the feeder. I'll just also lengthen the hook link up another six inches. two casters on that time, I thought I'd try it, and that was a confident bite. Just getting a worm, using the scissors, so you get a clean cut, just nip the head off, 
and then just thread it on all the way down the shank, around the bend. And this one, I'm just going straight down the middle of the caster and out the side, like that. So I've still got plenty of hook points showing. Let's get two or three worms. It's like a big tide today as well. Big high tide anyway. I suspect when it does ebb it's gonna be quite strong. I've just swapped rods, <coughs> walked the second rod out, and it's so much better. It's a lot lighter rod, lighter tip in it, a bit, bit more bend on the tip. Nice uh, three quarters of an ounce fiberglass tip in it. So. But on the other rod, I'm going to change the hook link now. Don't turn the hook link on that one. Look at that, it's just line bites at the minute. Just banging in the line. Just hook right in the corner of its lip. See how many times the tip was banging away. Nice rope. It's a lot, lot softer this rod. You have to give it a good sweep above your head when you strike. Fishing probably good. 80 yards out. There's a lot of line to pick up. One bit of worm and single bit of castle then. And this is the one I finished with the other day um, at Ludham. It's got a lighter hook link, a bigger hook. Size 12 cameras and B520.
I'm going to duplicate on the other rod in a minute. Same hook lift. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice one. When I get home, I will, uh, as well, I'm going to duplicate the rig that's on here. Incorporate in two or three sliding feeder stops. Two below and one above on the bead. So I can adjust the hook link. I can slide these two beads up. These gripper beads, they're really tight. Make the hook link shorter or longer. I've got them all the way down to the hook link at the minute. And I've got about two and a half to three foot to the stop, top stop knot. Grip knot. Okay, that's a bad fit. I'll probably have a decent load of fish. Have a nice quality roach. But out there, when I'm fishing, just on the apex of the corner there, Obviously, there's a. This used to be the old ferry crossing bit. We still run from that gap there towards here. And there's like a turning basin there. It goes a little bit shallower. It's a nice turning area. Worms working well at the minute. Although they're not looking the best, I tell you, tell you the truth. Again, just plug in the feeder, pin it in the bottom, good pinch of caster, half a dozen grains of corn, pinches of dead squat, and two mil. I made the decision early to completely cut out any maggots, so I haven't even put any maggots in on the feeder now. I did have some dead maggots, and I've looked. I had them with me this morning, but I can't find them. Let that settle a minute before swinging out. I just feel the weight behind me. <laughs> Hit the clip. Watch the clip. It's just settled now. On the rest. I still keep feeding my five metre whip line all the time. I'm 
and I'm going to do just replicate what I did the other day. As soon as things go a bit iffy and quiet, I shall put another bait up feeder in. Feed it. Let let it rest for 25 minutes. Go on the whip, and then back on the feeder. I just keep alternating and switching between the two. The feeder's been in a couple of minutes. I've had a few tiny little trembles. What I've done is I just put one very slow turn on it till the feeder moves, then resettles, just to bring the hook hook bait into where the feeder was. And just see if it works. Sometimes worth experimenting. They do like it twitched as well, the worm today. Just get the line and just tweak it a couple of times. Get the line a bit. Better to be safe than sorry. The feed is not moving. I mean, it's very little flow. I think it's easing up now, I think. There's a couple of big boats coming in close to me, so I'm gonna have to be a bit careful. I'll wait in a minute. As soon as I get here, I'll, I'll quickly wind in. Okay, guys, it's quarter to nine. <coughs> Set another little skimmer. Just gone back on the worm and single caster you get a lot more purchases for the hook hold and connecting more <coughs> but I think what I'm going to do is alright so it's still there I'm still waiting for you know about, about four minutes for a bite but they're just getting very tentative now and they're just ever such a slight pluck so I'm going to put a bait up feeder in and then just give it 25 minutes on the whip and then go pack over the top and see if they just settle down a bit, a bit more confident. Okay, what I decided to do, guys, I picked up my heavy feeder rod and also put a baiting feeder in, but I thought what I'll do is, because I put a, um, a new hook link on, replicated the other one, 3.2 pounds fire per on, the size 12, camera the B520, but I've only got a really light, half an ounce feeder on there because there's so little flow at the minute and maybe that sticker tip is just going to help me see bites a little bit better so I thought I'll just give this four minutes four or five minutes maximum bring it in put the bait up feeder on because this rod's got um, 12 pound 12 pound uh, shock leader down to 10 pound braid and this is the one I've clipped up with um, and it, you need that 12 pound shock leader on there when you're chucking a 60 gram feeder full of a couple of ounces of a of bait, ground bait and all the rest of it. And the other rods are a little bit too soft to be chopping that out. So I'm just going to see if that a lighter feeder and stiffer carbon tip is any better. definitely pick up the line a lot better because I've got 10 pound braid all the way back to the reel just the shock leader which is got about three turns on the reel up and up the rod and out the other end so I just got to pick this rod up and wind into it with the other rod with some uh, 10 pound mono all the way through or 10 pound shock leader there, 8 pound Shimano Technium main line um, you've got to sweep it above your head and there's a bite. So the bite's a lot more just gentle pulls on here because it's a three ounce carbon tip. And not the erratic bites that I'm getting on the glass fibre tip. Probably just dulling things down a bit. So 
So I'll give it in a couple of minutes. That's what's happening before is you get one or two little plucks. They're not really taking it very confidently at the minute. So they're not very settled so I think we'll put a feeder, bait, bait up a feeder in, in a minute and then we'll get on the whip line. Okay, I didn't have anything on that cast so I put the bait up feeder in. So I'm going to go on the whip now. The first thing before I even put a bait on and uh, cast out and start fishing, I'm going to re-plumb because <coughs> I just put the rig in without any bait on and it's now flowing right to left so the tide's just turned. So. I'm probably going to be probably about a foot under depth. Yeah, that's not too bad actually. bang on, absolutely bang on. So yeah, just always keep checking the, uh, keep checking your depth, okay, have your plumber on the side box. Every 15, 20 minutes, things get iffy. Before you change anything, check the depth. But it's gonna be start to drop now, so, I have to probably keep shallowing up every 20 minutes or so. Just gone back to the uh, original shot and pattern I had before with just three or two number eight stops and a number ten stop. Let's give it a little bit of a slower fall in that bottom third. And I've just added a section to allow me to run it through a little bit more.
<laughs> that made a difference straight away, but something's still not right. I'm just going to keep playing around with the shot and pattern to the... I'm going to put another number eight stop on just to dot that float right down to the tip. I'm not going to swing that one. We'll put that number eight on and dot the float right down. Say I switched over to the caster, single caster. That's perfectly in the top lip. Another beautiful row. Try the maggot. I was just getting silly bites and getting ragged and tiny little blades. So, but right, we've had the caster for a couple of hours try a single caster and the bites are far more positive just sailing away no. try to get a nice big caster go through the blunt end all the way down as far as you can and just just turn it just so I've got the point poking through Another roach.
that's just someone pulling the anchor chain. That float's picking up all the time now. Oh. Probably have another one or two runs through. And then I'll get back on the feeder. Now it's starting to flow. I should have picked up a bit. It always goes iffy on the feeder when it's slack. It's coming further down to my left now, so I expect because of the flow. I'm going to start feeding a bit further to my right. Pull them upstream a little bit more if I can. But I've noticed they're not as far out. Leave this one on the five meter and I'm going to put the extension on. And feed further to my right as well. I'm going to have this run through and then I'm going to try the feeder. I'm getting the bites right, right down the peg. All right, I think it's time to take my jumper off. Oh, I'm going 
gonna have one quick cast. We put it straight down to the right. The left, sorry. That's where we get the bite. Definitely time to go on the feeder now. Take the jump off. Okay, it's half eight. I've just had a really nice hybrid. Roach bream hybrid, scrap really well they do. Um, I put it straight in the net because it was quite deep hooked. So I've shortened the hook link down again by the six inches so it's at the top of the hook link. I've just cast out again, but there are so many fish boiling here, bubbling and boiling in. Every time I chuck the hemp and casters in on the six feet line, they're just they're topping everywhere. And I've just seen the biggest perch I've ever seen. I didn't get quite get a good look, it definitely weren't a pike because of the shape of it. It was either a perch or a bass. Short, thick and dumpy. But it was quite dark, so I'm assuming it was a perch. But if it was a perch, it was, it was knocking, well, over three pound. It was like that. It was like that. I'm not, not kidding you. Straight down there. But that sun's getting up now. It's getting bright. Oh, got a bite. There's a bite. I'm going to have to, I have to give it a really good sweep above my head because it's, as I say, two thirds of the way across and I'm bringing it around to my left. So I'll hopefully avoid that snag and keep my rod up all the time. Not as big this time. Oh, it's come off again. Right at the edge there. There's another big fish just top there. But the worm and cast are really doing the business today. You know, casters are gone, but the worm's good. Right, we'll get that back in again. Have a look at this water in front of me, guys. Well, feeding my hemp and casters, it's fizzing, it's absolutely fizzing. There's so many fish toffing and jumping there. A shallow rig today, look, look, all those mouths coming up, look. We had a bleak rig. There's fish topping everywhere. Tiny little bleak rig, that's all you need. Oh, I don't know why they're coming off. Literally, I was about to get them to the surface. And that was a bream. Got snot all over the line. Or a skimmer, anyway. I'm going to try a single bit of caster, just... 
so I've got a bit more hook showing. I think I'm going to have to, like I did there, stand up and cast because I'm a fair distance out. I'm sweeping the rod behind the head a bit, so I'm not casting quite so far. Oh, bite straight away. Might try double caster in a minute. Because the casters are definitely getting ragged off the hook. The worm's still there. And another roach hybrid. So. Okay, I've just put another, another A stop on. And that's settled the float perfectly now. And I thought what, I, what I'll do is, because I wasn't getting very good bites and little fish on the maggot, I thought I've been feeding caster and hemp all morning. I'll try the single caster straight, up, straight under and a better roach. So it's just a case, always experiment. If things don't look right, don't feel right, have a play about. Check your depth, check your shotting patterns, move shot up, move it down. Sometimes I want a positive bulk in a dropper, two droppers. Sometimes I want the Olivet really close, sometimes. But at the minute I've just got the Olivet about three foot away and I've got number 10 just above the hook length and then about four inches above that the number eight and that's it. It's just feeding every time a pin just starting to feed it so like one o'clock as it's starting to flow to the left but it's only ever so slight so but that number eight is shot of the float perfectly now and a single caster's doing the business straight in again. Right, let's get cracking on the whip then. It takes them a little while to get tuned into the caster, but when they do, there's generally better stamp fish. And it's had a good couple of hours to settle anyway. It's about a quarter to nine. <clears throat> no, it's not about quarter to ten. I've just gone back in on the feeder line. I tried the lighter rod but it bent double and it was just not holding so I've just gone stepped up to the heavy rod again with a heavier tip. It's flowing quite hard now. I, I knew it would do when it was a big tide like that, big slow flood tide. So I've got the tip right up in the air now. I'll just show you. It's holding nicely. I've got a nice bend in the rod.
I shan't give this too long too too long now probably give it half a dozen casts at the most four or five minute casts and if nothing develops I'll be uh, on the whip all day long I think But it's got out so hot now, really, really hot. There's not even any signs on the tip at the minute of small fish or anything. Today's one of them days it would be perfect for shallow fishing on here with a little bleak, bleak float and stuff or even a waggler. Putting a nice insert waggler in and trotting down. I thought of putting that bait up feeder in and leaving it 25 minutes. It would have got an initial response, but it might have drifted off. Maybe just a steady regular cast was, you know, on the cards. Okay, it's 10 o'clock. I'm just having a third cast on the. Uh, feeder I've been putting maggots through just to try and kickstart the peg again and I thought I'd ditch the worm and try double cast it. <sighs> now this for a roach <laughs> Ain't bad roach, for a roach anyway. So I'm going to carry on the same now, I'm going to put another double caster on, pinch your maggots through it, and the usual. In fact, I'm going to put three on this time, just to see. It's really tuned into the caster today. I'm going to put maggots through because if the bream and skimmers aren't there, I might as well try and catch the roach if they're that a decent size. Okay guys, I put my head down for an hour or so. I went on the feeder. The skimmers have disappeared, but I was getting some really good quality roach. Decent roach, nice chunky ones. So I turned that line, <clears throat> I turned that line into a, a roach line. Started putting maggots and casters through. And had half a dozen really good fish. Then it's gone a bit quiet and iffy again. And while I was doing that, I was feeding hemp and casters on the usual line, five meter line, and I started introducing corn. And then I went down the edge and got a few nice perch. And I've just gone out the end and I've just put three, well, about three runs through with corn on it. That's a really nice fish. That's a smaller one of the lot, but. 
I've just been introducing four or five grains of corn at a time. And they're really sort of like switching on, the good quality roads are switching on the sweet corn. There's a bit of a breeze uh, appeared from nowhere. I'll just try to find the smallest bit of sweet corn I can because I've only got a size 20 beef uh, 511 in. I'm just literally nicking it through the top. Just nicking it like that. I'm still doing the same thing, I'm just swinging out with five metres and adding this section. A few, bit, few casters. Hemp. Four or five bits of corn. And the corn is really bringing some cracking roach in there. That's all the sweet corn. I always see people go for it on the bream, but never for roach. And down here for the roach and blood, it's absolutely cracking. And the bites are so clean on the corn, it's just sailing away nicely and awaiting a second when it disappears and then striking or just lifting and there you go again wow missed that one pulled out i wish i had a bigger hook i could tie a new one on i suppose We're straight in again. And this is what happened last time I was here when I started using the corn. These sort of roach skimmer hybrids move in. They put up a hell of a scrap. You soon build away with them. Oh, he's gone then. <laughs> he didn't want to be in the net. They're all slimy like bream, but they've got uh, roach characteristics or shape of a roach. I'm just trying to find the smallest bit of corn I can. And I'm just basically going through the top and out. Giving me better hookups. Yeah. 
Bloody hell, it's one a bung. Okay, just had another couple of those rope skimmer hybrid things. I was just bringing one in then, and then this four, about four pound jack pike just came up, took it side on. It let go when it got to the surface, but uh, I put, the, put it straight back, <laughs> that one's suffering enough. But uh, I've just gone straight back in and it hasn't affected the fishing at all. I wouldn't be surprised if this one gets nabbed and all, if I don't bring it in quickly. Another cracking fish. And even though it came up right in my peg, it hasn't affected him. So I literally got it into the edge down here. And as soon as it came to the surface, pipe let go. I really stepped up the feed as well now. I've double, I'm not feeding aggressively, but I've doubled what I was initially feeding. Straight in again. Let's try and get this up. I'm, I've got to try and rush these now. I know there's a pike around. Another cracker. Well, I'm going to get my head down again while these is going. My aqua roach. The fishing's just getting better and better and better. I'm just going to start to cut the feed back a little bit to miss two or three bites, but still feeding every cast. So I'll settle them down a little bit first. I'm not even going to feed at all this, this time, just to see. And I'm just uh, after this cast, I'm going to pick up the plummet and replumb because I think it's dropped another foot or so. We're really getting there. It's a little bit further out. They're not staying in the same spot, they're drifting in and out.
Oh, what have I just done with my Discord? <clears throat> I've got another one. In fact, I've got about six in here. I always carry plenty of Discord, just, just, you never know. I'm just giving it, let the float disappear, count into the, count into one, and then striking. I didn't feed that cast, so I'm going to feed again. I'm just getting five metres, swinging out as far as I can, shipping on the six metre section. And one, and we're in again. And I'd say, without a shadow of a doubt, the sweet corn is the number one bait today for the roach. This is a real good one. I'm going to... Oh, I'll have to net this one. It's a roach skimmer hybrid -y thing. Almost chub sort of like looking but we've got the body and shape of a roach but there's no colour to them. Oh she so taking the hook. I'm gonna snap the hook. Let me just get this guys. He would have to be in the most awkward position. If I don't fall in the river. Or break my pole. Right, that's a good opportunity to put a bigger hook on now. <sighs> these are quite hardy, these skimmer hybrid things. Yeah, it's got the shape of a roach and the slime of a bream, but... Right, he's going in the net. you a bad boy. Okay, I'm not going to tie another hook link because I just remembered. I always carry this with me. I've got a big selection of uh, ones here. So let's have a look. Okay, not them ones. Okay, 2.8, 0 0.16. No. So I'm going to go for this one here. 2.8 pound by a purlon. To a size 16. B520. I use this one for, my, for the rivers because it's a bigger pouch so you can get like a foot hook length on there so that needs sorting out actually looking at it all right there. 50 all right let's get back out then well just barely turn the camera off oh, it would come off now faffing around with the camera is in about two seconds. It flew under. I've just gone for one dropper now. Push the other one up. But with the weight of the corn, and this bigger hook, I 
We've also taken about six inches off the depth as well. And there it goes, I'm thinking about it. I think that's on. It didn't settle right. I was going to bring a shot back down just to see. Yeah, well, I knew that was a bite. It's quite strange, you wouldn't have thought that size 16 would make a difference, but it obviously has, because I'm going to have to get a bigger bit of corn and try burying it a bit, bit more. Right, I'm going to bury that right inside and just leave the hook point out. Just to see. It was with a size 20, it was obviously nicely disguised. So it's a fair bit bigger hook. I'm just going to try fishing just beyond the feed, just to see where they are. No, well, it might be a case of changing this straight away then and going back down to the smaller hook. Obviously not that stupid, then, are they? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I mean, I didn't even think, I mean, I'm, I was just making do for a size 20 because that was on there, but um, I would have probably started with 18, but I might quickly change this and go back to a size 20 if I keep missing too many bites. I'm in mean, this time though. Well, I think I'm being piped again, I think. There's a pike after this. I've just seen something big come up.
that's just a really big roach a really big roach I had to get this one out because there's a pike after it I'm just going to hold this one firmly what a corker of a fish but this is just getting better with every cast guys the quality of the roach is absolutely mint Just under a pound, I reckon. Really chunky fish, healthy looking. I've just settled them down again as well. I'm feeding sort of every other cast now, but I've stepped up the feed again. Just to pin them down on the bottom a bit more. Right, let's crack on. Just had another two or three runs through, <clears throat> no bites. So I quickly uh, took another five inches off and we're straight in to a nice big roach skimmer hybrid. But they've come short now. I just keep looking at the uh, boarding on the far side. It's gone down, I'd say, another half a foot, so it took five or six inches off. And I'm just trying to cast it straight into my feed. Started feeding a bit closer because this wind's picked up. And we're in again. I'm gonna call me the sweet corn king, the sweet corn kid. I'm quite confident swinging these. I mean, much bigger I wouldn't, but it's 2.8 pound by a pearl on, and it's like 16 hook. I stopped using this by a pearl on for years. Another cracking roach. But lately I've gone back to it again. I noticed it last year or a couple of years ago. I was on a commercial and I lost the hook link. I decided to change it. It was like a low tech line. I went back to the buyer pearl on and all of a sudden the bites just picked up. And you know, it's the color of the line. It's a nice sort of purpley brown or I don't know. I just got confidence in it. It's more of an old school line, and people still use it, but uh, oh, that was a fast bite. But even if I'm on a <clears throat> pole or whip and that, it's just because it's not pre stretched. It gives you a bit more cushion to swing it if you've got a high-tech line especially on the whip because you've got no uh, you've got no elastic it's just a bit more of a shock absorber effect if you've got a high-tech line and fish is bouncing away it can snap you done me And literally just plopping the float straight down where I'm feeding. You 
keep that corn going in half a dozen bits at a time well it's supposed to be a light breeze today it's picking up all the time Right, I'm going to drop this one back short. Well, I might even take another couple of inches off. I think I'm just going to lower this one in. I'm just going to lower it into where I'm throwing the feed. This wind's making it awkward. It's just pushing it downstream a bit unnaturally at the minute. I'm gonna try with a section off. And if nothing this time, I'm gonna take a couple of inches off. But now we're in, straight away. I just gotta lower it into where I'm feeding, literally. We come close in. I've just taken another inch or two off. Another great big quality hybrid. Okay, you guys, fished on for another half an hour. Fishing's been that good. It's been more fishing than I've got bait. They've cleared me out of bait completely today. Been scouring the blades of grass with bits of sweet corn. I've literally just put the last bit on. I've got about two dozen casters left and a tiny bit of hemp. This is the last cast, it's the last grain of sweet corn. They've wiped me out. And they're still there and they're still coming thick and fast.
wish I had another can of corn, but I haven't. Right, I'm going to get this lot sorted out. We'll get the net out. We'll have a look what we got. And then we'll quickly slip them back. It's typical I was going to I say, do I bring the scales with me today? I thought, no, I don't need them. But we'll have a good look what we got. There's an orchard there. Roach hybrid rod. What about two thirds, of, three quarters of a pound to a pound? Let's get them straight back. Okay guys, I'm all done, I'm back at the cast, one o'clock. I fished at about 12 o'clock, just gone. Literally used all my bait, all my sweet corn, all my casters. I've got a couple of dozen maggots left and a handful of hemp, which just got rid of. But uh, what an awesome day's fishing, absolutely awesome day. Started on the whip, for, fed the feeder line, left that for 25 minutes. Started on the whip, there's plenty of fish there, I knew there would be. Back on the feeder line. Just that one decent skimmer, but again, decent quality roach today. All those big roach are back. Um, some big hybrids and rod and that. And then it went a bit quiet, fed it again, but I just got the impression today with a very slow tide. It's hardly flowing at all. It's not really a bream day. The bream seem to like it when there's a bit more pull on the water, when there's, when there's a good tide on. So I quickly sacked that off and I made the decision, because the uh, whip line was working so well, with the maggots, or the casters, hemp, and maggot, well I wasn't feeding maggot on the whip line, but I thought I'd start off a maggot line on the feeder, and it worked, and got some good quality roach and that, but I thought, well it's pointless being all the way, th two thirds of the way across, just over, if I can catch them in front of me, and I'd never go on the whip, and I thought, something in my head just thought, well oh, last year I had a couple of really good sessions, late on in the season, on sweet corn, so I just, introduced three or four bits initially at a time and after the third run through I put a bit on, bit on the hook, got nothing to lose and it just sailed away and from then on in I've not looked back, I've fed like half a dozen to eight sort of bits of corn at a time and just casters and hemp and it peg it's just got stronger and stronger and better and better and the quality of fish has just got better and bigger as the day went on um, it was just in case they were there all I had to do today was, uh, didn't have to mess around from shot and pattern. I had the uh, Olivet and a bulk underneath it, and then just one number eight dropper and a number 10. And that was the best by far. Getting it right down on the deck fast, that's where they were. With the very small flow, with very little flow, the bait was falling pretty much where I was putting it. So I just literally drop it in, five meters of hand and drop it in, and then just a gentle swing out let it come back and settle against the shelf and it just sailed away every time it's one of them days where you, you wish you brought more bait but uh, they cleaned me out today completely so well i hope you enjoy the video give it a go sweet corn always works on the riviere for the big roach rudd and hybrids hope you enjoy the video hope there's some good tips in there and all the best guys i'll see you again in next week cheerio